have any proof, have anybody seen any Pakistani regular so far in our front line, you will never find anything. All right. Let me, let me, you want to respond to that because I want to move on to... to Go ahead, move on. Do I understand you to say that you destroyed the Buddhist statutes because uh, you, because of some external reason that you were offended by? Or did you change your mind? Did Mullah Omar change his mind seemingly having viewed the protection of the Buddhist statutes at some point earlier, several years ago, and then changed his mind? Did he change his mind because of some external force or not? Uh, I was here in Los Angeles when this was going on. I called him and he said this is not his decision. This is the decision of the Council of Scholars. And the Council of Scholars had decided it when they were frustrated by a group of foreigners who wanted to repair these statues or, or something like that. They said, please help the children who are starving, of, who are dying of, of malnutrition. We don't need the statues at this time. The statues is not a serious problem for them. For them, their children is much more important than the Okay, statues. but let me stop you so right there, because it's my understanding that not only a lot of cultural figures in the Western world, for the lack of a better definition, also the Secretary General of the United Nations all appeal to you not to do that. My guess is that you could have gotten some money from foreign elements for starving children if that was the issue in order to protect the statute or remove the statutes or something like that other than destroying them. When we talk, it when seemed I to me that it just, they became, the statute became a tool when in I a talk, geopolitical struggle and had nothing to do with starving children. And when I talked to the Council of Scholars, he said that why are they worrying about her heritage when they're destroying our future? So it is ridiculous but for yeah, them you because keep tying it, you keep tying it to some sense. Why are they worried about a heritage when they're... When, when so it is funny for them because they are they're simply frustrated with all those things that they have seen. They say that if you don't care about our children and we are destroying their future with economic sanctions, why do you, why do you want to repair the statues? And they well, said that any statue in our... And we have not said that all the statues will be destroyed. Okay, These but, statues, all right. and, well, let, me, let me just have one more. I know you want to well, jump in. One second, give me one second to go and interrupt you. But it seems to me you are saying that if in your definition or the Council of Scholars definition you were not, quote, injuring or destroying children, you would not have destroyed the statues. Well, you don't let me to explain to you. What I say that if these, har these statues were harmful, then in our religion we will not allow them. And I ask them, why is it harmful? Well, they say that if the money is going to the statues and not to our starving children, they are harmful. Well, obviously, this is not a rational explanation. Whatever. But I think it is, it reveals something that's important. And that's what I, what I was, uh, when I come back to, which is that, of course, there's an Islamic principle against graven images. But in Muslim countries all over the world, they preserve their cultural heritage, nonetheless. Therefore, we shouldn't understand Taliban just as some kind of extremist religious ideology. It is a reaction to this very extreme situation. Now, it's totally irrational and criminal, in my view, to destroy statues because people are letting children die. And it's also true that the Taliban could have done a lot for those starving children, such as moving those families into the garrison in Herat, instead of leaving them out uh, in the open where they died. But it's also true that the United Nations has issued an appeal, humanitarian appeal, for $254 million for Afghanistan this year. And so far, the nations of the world has subscribed to 8% yeah. of that appeal. 8%. Please, please 8%. Me... So, so yeah. it's understandable that people in Afghanistan are very angry about this. It's not rational to destroy the world's cultural heritage out of your anger. Please let me explain it completely. What I say that are the lives of two children less important than these statues? How can you justify starving people when, when, you, when Afghanistan was your playground, you fought their war, and all of the problems in Afghanistan are the reflections of the world's policies, not our creation? So if you don't like the image in the mirror, please don't break the mirror. Break your face. So in Afghanistan, we have said it again and again, that the problems are not our creations. So how can you, for you, I will give you an example. If you ask a pilot to go and blow a place, he will do it. But if you ask the same pilot to go and slaughter those people, he will not. You don't see that what you're doing. You are starving children, and they are dying every day. All you see is the two statues, which is not a serious problem for us. For us, our children are much important than this. And well, there are many things that you just pollute. What about the water in the world? You're polluting the water in the world, and that, that causes droughts in our country. 
You're polluting the air. What about that? You're destroying those old forests, thousands of years. What about that? Why aren't they getting so much media as these two statues? Look, well, they're it's, not, not that right. it's not only foreigners who care about these statues. I know many Afghan people who are absolutely heartbroken, and among them are people who were defending the Taliban, who are stopped defending the Taliban now because they thought the Taliban would restore some kind of national unity, and now they feel the Taliban are acting against the national heritage of Afghanistan. At the same time, what he says is true, and I find it very strange myself, having worked on this country for so many years, that uh, with millions of people being killed, uh, starvation, destruction of the city, finally the media attention comes when these very valuable, priceless cultural artifacts are destroyed by these extremists who are reacting to that extreme situation. Uh, and he, uh, it's wrong to say that all the problems of Afghanistan are the result of the actions of non-Afghans. They're the result of collaboration between Afghans and non-Afghans. And both the Afghans and the others are responsible. And the Taliban, claiming to be the government of the country, cannot avoid their responsibility for the welfare of the people, even though their resources are few. And they owe it to those people to try to meet the international community's concerns so that they can help those people more. And the fact that they destroyed those statues will, unfortunately, make it even more difficult to help those people. So you see, we are now caught in a kind of escalation of, uh, a, a, of, those, of the two sides and somehow we have to find a way uh, to rebuild the country uh, and um, help those people that he is talking and we, about. Uh, and we, s we waited for two weeks. Mullah Omar delayed these orders of scholars for two weeks in order to get some sort of counter edicts from other Islamic countries to, uh, to, to resolve this problem. And nobody came there. Well, the, there were counter edicts from and other they, Islamic when countries. They came there, and there's no excuse for those actions. Uh, I, you, uh, you know, there is some explanation of it because Taliban did not come from Mars. They came out of this terrible, extreme situation. But still, uh, there's, no way, there's no way to defend it. I think it is true, however, that there is an image in this country that they are just religious extremists without understanding the, in, the really terrible context in which they are acting, and in my opinion, uh, also, which they are making worse. But they are doing that in the conviction that they are making it better. Uh, I have to leave it there. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Shimi. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure to have you here. We'll be right back. Stay with us. We have a conversation with Sebastian Unger, who went to Afghanistan and talked to Mr. Massoud, who we have referred to earlier in this part of the program.